Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we'll be learning, hopefully, a lot about Lenny and Lynette's backstory. I've um, been really excited about this ever since the reveal on Genshin Twitter about these characters, because they've been so mysterious and so, like, weird, you know? So, I do want to apologize. I made a video talking about the whole Lenny and Lynette situation that happened, and I kind of had misinformation because I did not do the quest line yet. So, we're doing it now, though, and we're going to thoroughly enjoy it. We're doing this old school style. We're not streaming on Twitch. We're just doing this, you know, full immersion. So let's dive in. I was always skeptical about these two when they first came out, but there we go. So we have the Forgotten Thief, the Phantom Thief's reappearance. Ooh, is this going back to the Archon Quest? The bustling streets of Court Fontaine seem more lively than usual. Why not take a walk around? Oh, and also talk to Charlotte. Hey, ooh, wow. This is actually gonna be interesting. Huh. Hmm. Hey, isn't that Charlotte? Almost got me. I see. So you believe that this warning letter was sent by the Phantom Weasel? Phantom Weasel? I, I don't know why. I just love seeing Charlotte on screen. Absolutely. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Phantom Weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death ten years ago using a body double. Now that he's back, I'm sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache, but however this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be is boring. Boring. No, but I've realized in Fontaine, there's a lot of, uh, it's kind of like real life. They, they bring back a lot of old cases that have never been solved. Couldn't agree more. As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one. Thank you, sir, for your time. Now, whom should I interview next? Oh, huh? Hey! What a coincidence! <laughs> Fancy meeting you here! I love her, VA. Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I thought we were gonna go back to, like, Halsey. This is actually a whole different thing. Phantom Weasel? Could you call us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this case is from a decade ago. I guess you wouldn't know about it. We only just got here. Well, not to worry. You're in good hands because I'm a professional. The story goes like this. Ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. Known only as the Weasel. Nobody knew his true identity, and the authorities never managed to catch him. So what was he? He was just... Just stealing everything? Wow, cool! He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in novels. Yes, night burglars. Precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our weasel targeted whatever people held dear, and no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child for their birthday. Sounds like an absolute weirdo. I know. The phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor. But this guy did not discriminate. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. I'm not gonna lie, I already kind of forgot we were doing Lenny's quest. I was like so invested into this story. Let's hope Lenny wasn't the thief. Um, not exactly. Surely. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this day if it hadn't been for an accident ten years ago. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high-altitude escape performance. Ooh. Did not want to die during your performance. That is... When the police went through his personal effects, they found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the Phantom Weasel's identity was revealed to all. Sure enough, thefts in Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, ten years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters and pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. Uh, probably just somebody who's trolling, right? I had to squeeze through the crowd this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. Uh, okay. I see a J. I see like a a U, maybe. So, this is the warning letter, huh? 
Let's see what he wrote. Three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the Opera House. Just as you did to me ten years ago. Ooh, the revenge play. This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the Phantom Weasel is back with a vengeance. What once seemed like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again. But why has he re-emerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop. And I'm going for it. Everything Charlotte says is just like a trailer to a movie. Uh-oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? He might steal all your favorite snacks. I might try and nab you, <laughs> little Paimon. Aww. But Paimon doesn't want to get kidnapped. Well, he'd have to go through you first. You would stop him, right? What was the all? The all sounded like it was like, appreciative okay the people have spoken it's clear that the public are very concerned about the phantom weasel's reappearance uh what's going on up here let's see i've got a photo of the letter my interview notes yep that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article it does feel like something is missing though they uh i highly loves to reuse assets but i'll give him that that was that, that's a good idol for lenny and it kind of works in uh, scenarios like this. Something exclusive. Oh, what on earth does Lenny have to do with this? Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the weasel. Hmm. <gasps> is that who I think it is? Another magician. Lenny! Looks like he's performing some magic trick. Magic. Magician. Caesar. <gasps> the Phantom Weasel. That's it. Let's go interview Lenny. What? You see, the original Phantom Thief Caesar was a magician too. And what do Phantom Thieves and magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. They really kind of give magicians a bad rap. Like they they mix magicians and thievery together so much. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? No, I mean she has a point. Journalistic instinct tells me that an exclusive news story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. And they're gone. They always try and they always try and put thieves and like uh, you know magicians or actors on like one one loop. David. Wow, Mr. Magician, how did you know which card I picked? Oh, it's simple. Come closer, and I'll let you in on my secret. Magicians have a special skill called telepathy, which means we can read other people's minds. Really? Then, what am I thinking now? Well, first you need to relax, because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind, as if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. <laughs> Aww. And now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to find a way to empty your mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. You snuck out from home today, didn't you? You Dang. told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's <laughs> not a good habit. Tisk, tisk, tisk. You, you can tell? Uh, oh, boy. You really can read my mind. I'll be honest, that actually was kind of impressive. How did you... Of course. Oh. Oh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be worried about you. I guess also you could have just looked around a bit like his parents aren't here, so... Uh, all right. Got it. Bye, Mr. Magician. Mr. the magician. Uh, hey, Lenny. He looks out of it. <laughs> Why, hello. We meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Under arrest. Oh, why don't you guess, Mr. Telepathic? 
Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite beyond me. I mean, I can't really believe anything you say anymore. I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on the money. That was nothing more than a little trickery. I made an educated guess based on his micro-expressions. That, plus the fact that he was the only kid here without his parents, yep. and he looked as go. guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm. Let me guess. Don't tell me you're here for the Phantom Weasel, are you? He must have heard us. Wow! Cut it in one! Is this more of your trickery, Edward? Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you oh. were asking around about that. Hmm. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the latest news about the Phantom Weasel. So, Linny, what are your thoughts on this infamous thief's reappearance? Hmm. To be honest, it makes me angry. I love how the music stopped right there. It was just like, hold up. Angry? Why? Honestly, I couldn't tell if he was going to be inspired by it or neutral, but... You read his letter, right? Angry. The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be performing there. Ooh. Yikes. Huh. What are the chances? <gasps> Wait a minute. You don't think he's after you, do you? Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And that's why I hate him. And if he's not... Then it's still going to be a huge headache for me. The mere mention of the weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my show. The weasel is not really a threatening name, honestly. If someone called himself the weasel, I would not really be. I guess weasel in the term of like, you get into places easily so you can steal stuff. But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the Phantom Weasel's identity before the show begins. When does this take place? Because you already had his big day and that did not go well. So, I mean, can you already perform again like nothing ever happened? I guess he won the case, so really? I guess it's fine. So what you're saying is... We might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief. Wow, this has exclusive written all over it. Fighting duel? What kind of duel are we talking about? To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable methods. You're being far too modest, Linny. I think your magic tricks are even more inscrutable than those of a thief. Wow, I haven't seen it yet. Thanks for the compliment, though I have to say, I don't care much for the comparison. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person <laughs> noticing. But there's an important <laughs> difference that these people overlook. It's true, actually, I guess so. Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower. Just oh, an wow. ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two... What? Uh oh. Her face. <gasps> it's gone. Where did it go? That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the difference between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. If I could now invite you all to Where check your clothes, oh. there might be a surprise in there somewhere. <laughs> okay, I, I I like that actually. Oh, <gasps> it's right there! But how? You haven't moved this whole time. What? How? What an outstanding trick! Sorry, Lenny. It seems that my previous praise was woefully inadequate. Clearly, magic is the superior art form to theft. Don't worry, I didn't take offense. 
I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have about magicians. I mean, it's two different natures, though. I mean, I, it, yeah. They're similar, but... Like you said, the magician's gonna make it reappear. The thief is not. Since Caesar's death, a lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower related performances to represent passion and romantic encounters. And also to love themselves up. But you used a loony do spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind this choice. Oh, there's a little quest line in the front of the Fountain of Lucene. Whoops. <laughs> Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful journalist. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in mm. the habit of using Lumidu spells in my magic. The mean spells? It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's floral language facts when I have some time. But it'll have to wait until this phantom weasel business is behind us. Well, that'll be in three days. Well noted. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. I, for one, am looking forward to the final showdown between you and the thief. Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will of course see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the Phantom Weasel is caught by then. If there's mm. nothing else, uh, I'll be off. You've given me lots to work with here, and I've got no time to lose if I want to write that exclusive piece. I'll see you all later. Bye, Charlotte. Are you going to tell us how you did that flower trick now? <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little secret. Confused as to, like, what the thief is going to do, exactly. Like, just steal more, I guess? Uh, well, magicians are entitled to their secrets. But Paimon's really itching to know how it's done. You feel it too, right? So itchy. The Phantom Weasel, you sure you'll be able to handle him? <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? Well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as my temporary magician's assistance and help me investigate? Uh, don't let this be a... Honestly, this might be good, because... The Weasel's probably going to be an NPC, right? But I don't think we'll... Let's just keep going. Magician's assistants? Oh, that sounds fun. Assistants are technically magicians too. If we just find out the details about it with Lenny, then it'll be more of a we're hanging out with Lenny kind of thing. Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done. Shall we go for it? <laughs> Jesus Christ. What will be with your investigation? Excellent. Thank you for putting your trust in moi. Hmm. The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. That's my assumption. I think it's a copycat criminal. I think it's just somebody trolling. But if he wasn't the Weasel? Hmm. Well, that'll make things more interesting. It would mean that the Weasel lives, and he's been laying low all this time in some corner of Fontaine. Yeah, but why would you do that for 10 years? Like, but then again, maybe he faked it on purpose and then he wanted to just like live his life and not be that anymore. But I'm confused to why he, he was a thief, but he had performances. I, maybe I missed something. And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiance Gemma is a good place to start. Gemma? Word is that she visits the cemetery often. So I asked Lynette to wait for her there. We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous with Lynette. Hold on, I'm already getting a little, a little confused here. So Caesar is the weasel thief, right? Go to the cemetery and look for Gemma. 
Gemma. Huh. Because I was thinking it was the same person, but the way he's explaining it now, I've, maybe it was somebody different. Oh, is this the same place? Oh, it was, yeah. There she is. You took your time. <laughs> Sorry. I bumped into the Traveler and Charlotte en route, and we ended up chatting for a while. It's been a while, Lynette. We're working as Lenny's temporary assistants in the investigation of the Phantom Weasel. Weasel. Thank you. It's good to have you helping. So, what's the situation? Have you seen Gemma? Nope. I've been here a while, and she still hasn't shown up. How bizarre. Maybe it was bad intel. Well, we won't get anywhere by standing around waiting. Traveler, Paimon, let's go ask around. Hmm. Okay. I wonder why she wanted to... I'll wait for you here and see if Gemma shows up. Gemma. <laughs> Giuliano. I wish that was my name instead. Giuliano. Let's go. Literally just Julian with an O at the end. And Garcia. Or, wait, no, not Garcia. Gracia. Baltasar? Baltasar? Excuse me, good sir. Do you by any chance know a Gemma? Gemma? You mean Caesar's fiance? Sure I do. What's this about? So his fiance... What? Before he died, like 10 years ago? I'm just trying to get a hold of her because I need her help with something. I heard she comes here a lot. Yeah, okay. I don't know why, like, I was just thinking they were saying it like that. And I was like, I guess I just still call her that, even to this day. Yeah, she does. <sighs> Poor thing. It's no secret why either. She's heart sick. Ever since Caesar passed away, she's been coming here once every week to clean his grave. Often, she just sits there in front of his headstone, lost in thought. Sometimes she talks to herself. I mean, are you just assuming she'll just be here one day out of the entire week? I asked her what she was doing once. She said she wanted to speak to him again. She knows he's gone and can't hear her from the grave, but she just likes to spend time there. Telling her fiance all about how her life is going. And she's been doing this ever since Caesar passed away? Oh, so 10 years. Wow. Their love must have been really strong. I mean, that's. That's heartwarming, but I mean, aren't we. Isn't this like the, the thief? Or like, that? don't we like not like this guy? The, the guy, like the thief, not. The wife. I'll bet. Her fiance. Caesar's reputation fell apart after his identity was revealed, so no one else visits his grave. Gemma okay. is the only one who still thinks about him after all these years. Sorry, so I forgot that's how it okay. So beforehand he was the thief, but then he had his performances. Once his identity was revealed, that's when they cut the, the pieces and it was like, Oh, he is the thief. I see. Okay. I don't know if the mind lives on in the waters after death, but if it does, I'm sure Caesar must be grateful to have someone who remembers him fondly. If I'm honest, I think this is all so unfair to poor Gemma. Her fiancé was a low-life crook. He doesn't deserve someone like her. Yeah, that's more of the response I was, like, waiting to see. Anyway, all of that said, she's running later than usual today. Normally, she'd be sitting in front of his grave by now. I wonder if she's okay. Well, that's everything I know, I'm afraid. You might have more luck asking some other people. No, that was a lot of info. Right. Well, thanks for sharing all of this with us. We'll keep asking around. You're welcome. I just hope she'll be able to move on one day. So it was jarring to her, too. Like, she thought everything was fine because he was performing, and then... Yeah, I guess. Okay. Gracia. Did you hear the news? They're saying the Phantom Weasel's back. You're kidding. Wait, isn't he dead? I don't know 
anymore. All sorts of news flying around nowadays. I can never tell what's true and what isn't. Oh, this is like the second time someone's passed away and... Well, I guess with the other situation, we did actually see that person die. But did we see Caesar die? Did we see his body? Or... I guess not if there's the question of he could be back. But what if? Just hypothetically, I mean. What if this weasel's the real deal and Caesar was framed? Called it. Seriously, ten years ago on the day it all went down, I said to myself, you know what? This guy's been set up. The Caesar I knew was a good guy. He gave balloons to children on the street for Pete's sake. What, are we supposed to believe that he was a balloon thief or something? Give me a break. I mean, could have, yeah. Could have been the setup. Oh, please. Weren't you the one cursing his name to high heaven when the police announced the news? You were all, oh, that gosh darn lousy son of a, oh, you think you know a guy, or <laughs> words to that effect. Wait, did I say that? Hmm, I don't seem to recall. I like these two. Sorry to interrupt. Hello there. Sorry for disturbing you, but I couldn't help but notice you were discussing the Phantom Weasel. We're actually quite interested in this topic as well, but we're struggling to get to the bottom of it. Do you think you could spare a moment to tell us a little bit about Caesar? You've come to the right people. Yep, I was there. Back when Caesar used to perform magic tricks on the street. He was a great magician. The best trick I ever saw him do was pop a transparent balloon, only for a whole bunch of doves to fly out from the inside. Hmm. I was right up close and didn't blink or look away once. But for the life of me, I still don't have the faintest clue how he pulled it off. Really incredible stuff. I saw him perform too. He always used to bring some gifts along for the kids who came to watch his show, and he'd hand them out after he was done. Uh, yeah, I can't really tell. I need more info. Sometimes, he even got the kids to write their wishes down, and then he'd make the items on the wish list appear in his next show. Huh. He doesn't sound like such a bad guy. Now, that's the... that's the illusion. But after he died, there were also rumors that he used the wish list to find out what was precious to people, with the intent to steal it later. That's interesting. As I'm sure you know, the Phantom Weasel would steal just about anything from anyone. Hmm. Whatever the case, now that the Weasel is back, Caesar's become a hot topic once more. I bet Gemma must be pleased. If Caesar's name gets cleared, maybe it'll finally give her some solace after all this time. I wonder if she'd be happy just to hear he's alive again. No, speak of the devil. That's her over there. If you've got any more questions about Caesar, She's definitely the one to ask. Something tells me she's not going to want to tell us. So that's Gemma. Uh, is it just Paimon or does it look like something's wrong? Wait, it looks like she's injured. Come on, let's see if she's okay. <laughs> I couldn't tell. <laughs> huh. That's the smallest grave there. The disrespect. Nice eyes. Who's asking? Don't be afraid. We mean no harm. It looks like you're injured. How bad is it? Thanks for your concern. But you didn't answer my question. Who are you? And what do you want with me? My name is Linny, and this is my sister Lynette. My name's Paimon, and this here's the Traveler. We're investigating the Phantom Weasel. Oh, she didn't say Paimon's Paimon this time. The Weasel posted a warning letter this morning. If he still lives, that means that Caesar was falsely accused. You knew Caesar better than anyone else. So if you're willing, we'd love to hear what you think about all this. <sighs> I promise you can trust us. We won't hurt you. In fact, we'll do all we can to keep you safe. I... I never believed that he was the weasel. That's only natural, yeah. Huh. I suspected as much. 
Okay, so going back 10 years, do you remember anything strange in the weeks leading up to the accident? Did Caesar have a falling out with anyone, for instance? No, not that I know of. <laughs> Got it. All right, sorry for disturbing you. If you don't have any more questions, please leave. I want to be alone with him. Because that was kind of a bad time to try and chat with her. Well. Who was Judging by the look on her face, there's definitely something fishy about her. Why is Gracia and uh Giuliano there? She's lying. She definitely knows something. She's lying. Perhaps she simply doesn't trust us. And that's what I said immediately. I was like, uh, eh, she's not gonna want to tell us. That's fair. We're just a bunch of strangers who showed up and started questioning her about things that happened a whole decade ago. It makes sense that she'd be wary around us. I'm, gl I'm glad they're aware. In any case, I doubt we'll get any further here, so let's call it a day. Meet me outside Hotel de Boer tomorrow, and then we'll start the next step of our plan. Only got one day left. After that. Wait, she's gone? Huh? Hmm. Gemma's hurt, you say? Now that you mention it, I did see her getting into a heated argument a while back. How long ago? Maybe someone who hates Caesar was taking it out on her. People can be unbelievable sometimes. True. Oh, Caesar. Were you or weren't you the Phantom Weasel? Well, considering he's back again, I'm going to assume he wasn't. Or there's a crazy story behind it. A lot of people find cemeteries bleak and oppressive, but not me. I find the silence gives me a sense of peace. And something about being in the presence of the dead and buried sort of puts all of life's woes in perspective. Hmm. Well, you should talk to Hu Tao. No, no in all seriousness, no, that, that, that's uh, an interesting take on it. I guess, like... Being around a lot of gravestones would make you appreciate your life a little bit more. So now we're waiting until next morning from 8 to 12. Yeah. Rendezvous with Lenny. Okay, so where is the hotel the board? Because I wanted to know when I was wishing for Lenny. Okay, so. Oh, it's. It's literally has its own symbol. Okay. Over here. Mm -hmm. Lynette's not joining us today? I've had her follow Gemma and see if we can make any inroads with her. They should be at a cafe right now. Had her trail her. Still, I don't think that Gemma's likely to open up to us. <sighs> so, we need a contingency plan. Who would she open up to? That's the question. What should we do? Where do we start? Today, we'll be looking into a guy named Lorenzo, Caesar's <laughs> former pupil and assistant. Lorenzo. When Caesar passed away, all the stolen goods discovered in his home were confiscated and returned to their rightful owners. But Lorenzo was the only one privy to all his magic secrets, and he inherited his craft. Hmm. Before long, Lorenzo was the next big magician in town, his fame surpassing even that of his master, and it made him very wealthy. He's since left the magic scene, though, and these days, he's a wealthy businessman with his fingers in a lot of different pies. So why didn't anybody talk about Lorenzo? If he outdid his... Oh, maybe... Okay, I see. Alright. I had to pull a lot of strings, but I managed to get him to agree to a couple of drinks with me. Be warned, though. I hear he's got a hair-triggered temper. We'd best be careful. Hmm. To pay him? Also, I've noticed too. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of uh, like blurry effects with their <sighs> shots. Talk to Lorenzo. That's not like a French name, is it, Lorenzo? I think so. You neglected to mention that you were bringing two other people with you. 
My apologies. These two are my assistants. When they heard that I was meeting with the former magic maestro himself, they begged and pleaded with me to bring them along. Um, and if it's no trouble, a couple of autographs would really make their day. That's going to push him away, probably. Oh, forget the pleasantries. Just sit. Also, he's not even a magician anymore. He's a businessman. Get a load of this guy. Forget the pleasantries, he says, but he looks pretty happy about Linny stroking his ego. <laughs> I only agreed to meet since we're both magicians. Do me a favor and cut to the chase. I have more important things to do than drinking. Much obliged, sir. As it happens, the matter I want to address is also related to magic. Yesterday morning, a warning letter from the Phantom Weasel appeared on the entrance to the Opera House. He claims to be planning something for the same evening that I'm scheduled to do a magic show there. As such, I believe that I may well be his target. I have to get to the bottom of this to ensure that my show can go ahead as planned. Naturally, any investigation into the Weasel starts with a few questions about Caesar, who... What is there to investigate? Caesar was the weasel and he's been dead for 10 years. So what if some sick creep thought it'd be funny to write a warning letter? It changes nothing. Are you trying to tell me you actually bought it? Uh, I mean, that's the thing. It, it, you know, it really does lean into what Lorenzo was saying. Like, you know, just some dude probably wrote some paper, or put it somewhere. But at the same time, you'd rather know before the day comes and then something terrible happens. Please, sir, no need to get so worked up. I do concede that a copycat is but one possibility. Possibility? It's a fact, Linny. Look, my patience is limited, so listen carefully while I'm still willing to put up with you. Like, did we see the body? Did we, did we bury... Uh, slow and stuff. Did we bury... Caesar. Like, did, did we see it happen? Because the weasel is dead. Period. Everyone knows that. So do yourself a favor and quit this investigation. It'll lead you nowhere. Look, if this affects your magic show in any way, I will personally compensate you for any losses. Oh, sir, I'm honored, really. But this isn't about finances for me. Why does this remind me of like Call of Duty Black Ops Two for some reason? My pride as a magician is what's at stake here, Lorenzo. Copycat or not, this person has thrown me the gauntlet, and I must meet their challenge head on. Your pride? <laughs> Don't mince words with me, boy. Just tell me what exactly are you seeking to do? Boy. I want to find out the Phantom Weasel's true identity. I have to know for myself what really happened ten years ago. What would that accomplish? And what do the events of ten years ago have to do with you anyway? Look, you of all people should know that a magician never reveals their secrets. And in any case, dead men don't talk. So if you really care about your magician's pride, then you'll forget about Caesar and move on. Who is this, man? Like, and the voice doesn't sound familiar, but yeah, this is great. Uh-oh, uh this is getting awkward. awkward. Renzo? Is that? Oh, it is you! <laughs> I know that big, uh, booming voice anywhere. What's up, my man? Wanna grab a drink with me? So, you're drunk. Another day, I'm busy. Aw, oh, come on! You can't be all business all the time. You know what they say! <laughs> Live fast, die! Young. Oh. You gotta learn how to kick back and relax once in a while. What is this? What is happening? If I wanted your life advice, I'd ask for it. Now get out of my face and go be drunk somewhere else. Thank you. I'm glad he mentioned it. Sorry, my good sir. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Hey, man. Oh, hey. Um, Edmondo. He and I are business pals. We worked together a bunch of times. This is your first time meeting him? Oh, he's always like this. Foul mouth and hard nose. Never heard a kind word out of this guy the whole time I've known him. 
Uh, I can't. And he wonders why he can't get a girlfriend despite being, what, pushing 40, 30, something? <laughs> anyway, point is, a lot older than when Jeez he first got Christ. rejected by the girl he was into. And he's still into, from what I hear. Shut up and get out of my face. Another word out of you and you can forget about doing business with me ever again. Do I make myself clear? I'm loving the, <laughs> the voice I this as well. <laughs> uh, sorry, I may have had a little too much to drink. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to leave. Don't work too hard. Hmm. Man, if... um. I think it's high time I made a move as well. If you really want to investigate this, Linny, be my guest. Okay, well, it kind of changed his mind a little bit. Um, I was going to say, if NPCs had a little bit more expression on their faces and they were more, like, enthusiastic, you know, if if Genshin wasn't so, like, locked by their engine, I guess, it would really fit, because, like, the voices are good. I want to hear the other languages, too, with that, that Edmundo. If nothing good comes of it, don't say I didn't warn you. I wonder what, uh, I wonder if Edmundo changed his mind, like, what made him swap so fast? Because at first he was like, no! Well, that fell to pieces in a rather spectacular fashion. Any thoughts? There's something strange about him. Totally! And what was all that about compensating you for your losses? Why would someone you just met make an offer like that? He's got to be hiding something, and not like Gemma. She was a little suspicious, but this guy's definitely covering something up. I mean, if anything, yeah, he, he was his right-hand man, so obviously he knows a lot more than anyone else would. I think so, too. We need to look into Lorenzo more closely. But at the same time, he did kind of, like, fess up, like, you know, hey, if you want to investigate it, go ahead. That guy Edmondo seems to know a thing or two about him. He only just left. Let's see if we can catch up with him. Ooh, and he's drunk, so we can, like, really get the, the scoop. Oh. Is he, like, throwing up or something? <coughs> yeah, like so. You okay there? Uh, who are you? Oh, it's you guys. Don't worry about me. I must have had one too many. Uh, I just need to... Right out. <laughs> uh, looks like uh, we might have wore off a little bit. I said way too much back there, didn't I? Yeah, I nearly talked myself into complete financial ruin. <laughs> Note to self, no more drunken chats when Lorenzo's around. So he was serious about threatening to cut you off? Ugh, Paima knew he was a bad egg. Oh, I didn't think so either. Hey, 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 hey. Keep your voice down. He's right behind you. Don't go prying into Lorenzo's personal affairs. <laughs> Bad things happen to people who ask too many questions. Or make an enemy out of him. What kind of bad things? Anything like murder? Don't even ask. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this conversation short. I'm not crossing that line again. And take it from me. Trouble with Lorenzo is one thing you don't need in your life. You saw him flare up back there. I don't know what you said to him, but clearly it touched a nerve. That's not a good sign. Mm. You're, you're too young for this. Don't get in over your head. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm. Well, that didn't work. Well, now we should have sent somebody to track Lorenzo. Shh. I think we're being watched. Someone was listening into our whole conversation. Well, never mind. Don't say anything and don't look back. Any altercation in the city will attract the guards. We better take this elsewhere. Dang. Wait, was that? Was that? Um, silver? Ah, why did they all disappear? That wasn't silver, right? Silver had like a more distinct look to him. 
Because that wasn't... It looked like somebody from uh, the Spina de, la... Spina de la Rosa. Spina de... Rosula. I heard. Somebody from uh, Navia's organization. I'm surprised we didn't get any more information out of uh, Edmondo. Especially with him being yep. smashed. Speaking of Navia, we should have went down there. Wait, no, we should not. You followed us a long way. Why don't you come out and introduce yourselves? So you're Linny. And where's your sister? <laughs> Ain't she with you today? Smooth face. Save us the trouble and go fetch her for us. Let's not drag this out. Why do you want her? Hyman doesn't like the tone of your voice, mister. Who sent you, huh? Sus. Save your questions, missy. You ain't gonna need answers where you're going. Capiche? Painter? Denaro? <sighs> Looks like we can't avoid this fight. Denaria? Now, I'm not the strongest fighter, so I hope you're ready to back me up. I love the idea that, like, everyone can fight within the lore. Don't worry, we got this! In some capacity. I'm confused with the outfits, though. I thought this was... I don't know. I thought it was, like, Spina de Rosa's group. Or, like, Navia's group. Hmm. Oh, shoot. It took, it took my Lenny away. Ooh. Okay, that was, uh... Ah! <laughs> That's actually not the worst thing ever, but still not great. Wow. Huh. Still time. Not the best. In terms of how builds go, but. Although it doesn't. Oh, no. Yep. It doesn't. Curses. They're tougher than we thought. Oh gosh, just like sick. Always <laughs> trouble. Intimidation ain't gonna work like it did on the lady. What's lady? Come on, let's scram. To intimidate Lynette? Hey, wise guys, we ain't through with you yet. Yeah, we should have interrogated them. Oh, they got away. <sighs> did you catch what they said just before they left? Something about intimidating someone else. Yeah, a whole five-star weapon. And we still let them go. Sounds like they just wanted to rough us up as a scare tactic. And they've already done it to someone else, but who? Okay, that's what I was thinking more of. I was like, I don't think that would have happened to Lynette if they were looking for her. You're right. She was injured when we saw her yesterday, and she acted like she had something to hide. The hell they want? Maybe she was too scared to tell us the truth because those guys had threatened her. Oh, those guys are running around trying to, like, keep things hidden. And she probably knows information that she can't, you know, let it out. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, she should be more willing to open up to us when she learns that those thugs won't be bothering her anymore. Yeah, tell her that we're going to protect you. Let's head back to the cafe and see if we can get any information from her. She's back there now. Hmm. It's a really, you know, elaborate plan putting this together. Like, hey, I'll be there in three days. Just letting everybody know. He's an attention seeker. Oh, no. Oh, Gemma. Okay. What happened? Gemma? You again. What is it this time? So, wait, what do you mean, you again? You're talking to Lynette. We just ran into the men who've been threatening you, and we gave them a taste of their own medicine. So, you can relax now. We're here to protect you. What? Why? I didn't tell you anything. Why would they come after you? <laughs> Sounds like they're no strangers to you. 
Yeah, she get that get that up real quick. Let that one slip. That's putting it mildly. I know them all too well, and I hate them with every fiber of my being. I wish I got all their names. It was Painter and Smooth Face. It's been ten long years, and still every time I try to look into Caesar's death, they show up and warn me not to do anything stupid. How do I know I can trust you? Do you really think you can get to the bottom of it all? And why are you doing this? It's just so weird, though, because, like, if he is still alive... Well, I guess what they're saying is Caesar was the good guy. He didn't do it. He got framed. And the weasel thief is someone else entirely. Right? While I was thinking it was like Caesar was a thief, but he just faked his own death and sat back for 10 years. I'm afraid I can't reveal all the details just yet, but I can promise you this. I will expose the Phantom Weasel's true identity. Because you see... This is a personal matter of the utmost importance. I give you my word. Trust me. Okay. How can I help you? I've heard that Caesar used to have a magic workshop where he kept a lot of his personal effects. If possible, I'd like to take a look at them. That's huge. Do you know where it is? The Fleuve Sondre. Fleuve the, Sondre. The place was sealed up by the police after his death, and no one's been there since. No, I've been there. I also know that the Fleuve Sandra is dangerous territory. Lots of hostile groups lurking around. If you're serious about going there, please be careful. Isn't that just like the underground area, right? Understood. Lynette, you stay here and take care of Gemma. Don't let her come to harm. <sighs> Got it. But if I'm staying here, I'm ordering <laughs> dessert. I mean, bon appetit, but stay sharp too. They're likely to come for you while I'm away. Okay. All right. Power saving mode off. I'll start taking this more seriously now. Hmm. Well, that is, uh, this is funny. With me here, nothing will happen. Hmm. Hmm. Whatever you do, please be careful. If anything happens to you because you're investigating Caesar, I'll never be able to forgive myself. Oh. Well, that was all. That was a. Uh, awfully quick change. Change of heart. That is not Flo Sandra. That is above the ground. There we go. So it's either he faked his death and disappeared or. He got framed, which honestly I'm leaning more towards frame because it's kind of what happened um, with Navia's father as well. Well, I mean, he didn't get. Yeah, I mean, he did. Just a kind of a different scenario. If Gemma gave us the right location, then the workshop should be right nearby. <sighs> Looks like these boxes are blocking the entrance. Let's shift them away first. Black screen? Yep. <laughs> there we go. It should be just down here. Ooh, wait. Domain? Oh, okay. I was gonna say, is there like an area that we haven't like, got to see yet? The magic workshop once used by Caesar. Judging by the pile of boxes at the entrance, nobody has come here in a very long time. So you're telling me there was just some boxes over the entrance? That's it? And nobody found it? There are just some boxes? I guess. Nobody moved those boxes for 10 years. Till today. Music check. Why am I on fire also? What's going on? Oh, it's just like this is C one. Oh, yeah, C three. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Music check. Huh. 
don't look like much going on over here right? in terms of this magician's shop. Oh, that's pretty cool. So this was Caesar's workshop. Hmm. Nothing suspicious here, just normal magic props. Let's head in further. No one no one's failed there ever. I was the first first data of somebody failing this domain. Skill issue. Kind of reminds me of the like 3.8 area that we got. There's all the balloons we're talking about. What was that? Oh, is this one of Caesar's gadgets? Uh, guess we must have triggered some sort of device. Honestly, Paimon, I'll give you that. That actually is kind of <laughs> frightening. There's always been something about like cute things like teddy bears. That they always somehow make creepy. I missed what it said. What is it? I mentioned to when they pop out. Hit them. Oh, I see. Dang, man. Oh my gosh. That's it. Yeah, C1 Lenny is nice. like some spy like specter gadget kind of sounded <laughs> song hmm. let's get it on let's get it on over here mm. not gonna lie I was thinking I had cows over here I did not let's light it up mm. adventure time Voila. Whoa. Look, the doll in the box is glowing. Huh? All right, well, that actually is a brand new asset. That's interesting. Yeah. I'd like a little dove. Oh no. Gracia was right. What about with cool powers? You need your parents permission to own a pet. You also need to take good care of it. I bought a fluffy toy dove for you the first time. If you were ready to own, own a pet, I'll make a real dove appear for you next time. Caesar. <laughs> Oh, and a bucket of fried chicken that never runs out. Don't we all? I'd like a new bag. That's the thing as fried chicken that never runs out. Just as there's the same thing as children who never grow up. Also, eating too much fried chicken is bad for you. Make sure you pair it with something healthy like a salad, alright? Nah, uh, I could be a ruse or I could just be like genuine. I don't know. I'll admit, they, they have me on this one. I can't really... I have a couple predictions, but... Like... Can't quite tell. It's just like a... Pretty good mixture of... Was he genuine and framed, or... Was he always... A sicko? Yeah, this says it looks like Fontaine mixed with the 3.8 Mirage. Uh, these magic boxes are moving. What do we do? One of them looks different from the rest. Let's investigate. It's one glowing. Oh, I see. Okay, the metal one. I missed. I missed it on the last one, so I'm not quite sure what the last one was. That one was that one. But yeah, I missed this one. Yeah, let's just restart. Okay. Middle one. 
Oh, that was kind of front and center. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's like, I like that. That was cool. Oh, I thought it was like 2D, like, and then it was 3D. Can you look at the wishes again? Oh, no. I wish my parents would get back together. I wish for good grades in my next exam. I wish my little sister to have a normal life free of danger. Oh, wait. You know what's going to happen? Lenny and Lynette as kids. Well, I don't know how old Lenny and Lynette are, but 10 years ago, they were probably like little. And they probably looked up to Caesar. And maybe they'll, they'll be a part of this, like one of the kids that like ask them questions. Cause like, I'm thinking, you know, right. It has to be about Lenny somehow. Right. So that's probably it. They probably were kids looking up to Caesar and they'll probably be one of the, one of the questions in this thing. Want you to know that you can always share your troubles with me, children, but some wishes need more than magic to make them come true. They need the power of your hard work. I wish you the best of luck and hope that all your wishes come true. Caesar. Hmm. I I bet you that's that's probably it. But it, it's got to be about Lenny and Lynette somehow. Otherwise, this is just like the weasel quest. I want to read the wish list here, but I'm too short. Oh, there it is. When do we get to go to your wedding, Uncle Caesar? Want to watch? You want to watch your shows? You want to kind of grow up, little Uncle Caesar? Do you have to go on tour? Can't you stay here with us, Uncle Caesar? Oh my! This round of wishes has rather exceeded my expectations. The wedding will be held very soon. Don't worry, you're all invited. Oh, so has already been scheduled, but I will definitely be back and you'll always be welcome at my shows if you like magic. Hmm. Also want to check for chests because like they always like to throw at least one chest in these events. And, you know, once you finish it, you can't come back. So Looks like we've reached the end of this route. Shall we try a different one? It's got to be about Lenny and Lynette. They got they had to been kids because I don't think Lenny and Lynette are that old. They look relatively young and 10 years is a long time. Spider webs. That's weird. Have we reached the end already? There's nothing here. Ugh, maybe this was a wasted trip. Lenny, what are you looking at? This place seems a little too ordinary for a magician's workshop. There's a distinct lack of mystery. We've triggered quite a few devices on the way here. Hmm. I'm starting to wonder whether Caesar built this whole place as one big elaborate magic contraption. Yeah, there are actually no traps anywhere. Well, there was that one trap that was made for me personally. If so, then there must be more to this place than meets the eye. Maybe a hidden room somewhere. There'd be a whole bunch of sick and twisted stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. If I just move this book, then hopefully... And... Presto. The magic word. It worked. Use elemental sight. <laughs> I'm a magician too, and apparently great minds really do think alike. Wow, is it great minds or it's is it big inside? Let's head in and take a look oh. around. <laughs> There's a chest. There you go. Imagine just not opening that. Minus two primos. Oh, I didn't even get to do it. 
Here comes the finale. I've actually never heard the music before. Also, I don't know what the animation was. Step right up. It's usually like so much happening on the screen. I never actually got to hear like the song. Step right up. Hmm. It's kind of like throwing me off with the gameplay because usually my like DPS character would be in the top slot. So it's like weird to press four. More battles. Yeah, two cat heads, two cats, or that's crazy. Wait, where do we go? Familiar somehow. Let me check this out for a second while you guys go on ahead. I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, the timeline adds up. If anyone makes a major discovery, let's rendezvous here. All right, see you in a bit. Hmm. Oh god, that scared me. I was like, what the heck? Two Ds. The placement of this uh, two Lenny's. Hmm. If I remember correctly. Wait, say what? The placement of this device inside. Hmm. If I remember correctly. Hmm. So it's familiar to him. That's already one big clue. Mm hmm. 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 Okay. Well. And we fought out here. Oh, I see. We went in the middle. Okay. So now... What is this? I think all the magic tests without sitting on the same one twice. Oh, boy. All right. Well, skip the video about 20 minutes. So I will be back. No, honestly, it doesn't seem... Too crazy. Maybe you can use... Oh, shoot. Uh oh, that's kind of cool, actually. Mm. I think we already messed this up. Does that one go all the way to the left? Oh, big time. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, I think we just might have went the wrong way. Because we almost had it, actually. Oh, wait. Maybe we go this way. Oh, and then this goes far left, right? Yeah. There we go. There we go. Got it. The door has been opened. We're gonna leave Lenny all the way back there? Nah. Is he still just like the same dialogue? The placement of this device. Okay. You, know, you gotta check sometimes, you know? You don't know if something happened. This looks nice with the lighting. Hey, Good grief. Is that Caesar's diary on the table? Is it? This book's thick as a brick. Let's take a peek inside it, shall we? It's already open. 
Uh, okay, so about the wish list, about children studying magic, about Lorenzo's issues, about the farewell. At one of my shows a few days ago, oh. a child asked me how I pulled candy out of my hat. As a joke, I told the kid that the hat has a built-in wish-granting machine. Next thing I know, today a whole bunch of kids were pestering me to pull all sorts of things out of the hat. So mm. I told them another white lie. The machine needs time to power up, but in the meantime, you can write your wishes down. Well, they took me up on that offer. Enthusiastically. As I write this, I've only just got back from running around all over town, <laughs> buying the things they wanted. Boy, are my legs sore. It's just like the sad reality, you know? I wound up saving very little this month. But that's not a major issue. I now have a bigger problem. How am I going to hide all these things inside my hat? <laughs> she should have said, you know, the hat takes a year to power up and then come back to him. Two children came to talk to me after today's show. I don't know why they were out on their own. They looked much too young to be unsupervised. I do hope they got home safely. So that was Lenny and Lynette. Anyway, they said that they wanted me to teach them how to do magic. Yep. It's not uncommon for children to ask this, of course, but I've never seen any of them as serious about it as these two. Yep. I told them that learning magic is very hard work, but that didn't faze them at all. It's like they already knew. They seemed so committed. I couldn't turn them down. Did one of them have cat ears? So that was Lenny and Lynette, for sure. About Lorenzo's issues? It seems like something's bothering Lorenzo lately, but he won't open up to me about it. Surely he's not upset that I agreed to teach those two children. I'll have to talk him around. I have a good feeling about those kids. They're naturally talented, and it seems like they're not new to the world of magic. I bet you they're working under Lorenzo's direction they have all sorts of those guys in suits ideas all i'm really doing is helping them develop a more professional standard training plan they wanted to call me master but i told them they absolutely mustn't any magician worth their salt could have taught them what i have they're the geniuses here compared to them i don't deserve to be called any sort of master with time I have no doubt that they could become far greater magicians than I. My only concern is why they're so mature for their age. <laughs> I fear they've had to grow up too fast. I don't dare to imagine what they must have been through. Yeah. Yep. Emma thinks so too. She doesn't like being around them. Says that their eyes are too piercing. They don't bother me, but then again... I've never been the sharpest tool in the shed. So did Gemma not recognize Lenny and Lynette? I mean, I know they were kids, but I don't know. I feel like you'd be able to at least tell, especially with their sharp eyes, their, their eyes being too piercing. About the farewell. It's nearly time for me to go on tour. I asked the two kids if they'd like to come with me. But they shook their heads. They couldn't, leave the, they couldn't leave the house of hearth. I once overheard them talking about their father and their mission. Sounds like their parents have other plans for them. I guess we'll be parting ways soon. Yes, sir. It's only been 10 days since I first met them. But I think that I've gotten a feel for their personalities now. I mean, it was kind of given, right? Like, it, it had to tie into Lenny and Lynette's backstory somehow. They're very tough, but also very cautious, and they trust no one but each other. This, I fear, is not a good habit to have. They hide things from me too. For example, when I asked them where they live and why they wanted to learn magic, they lied. They lied. That's the thing about children. Whenever they're trying to cover something up, it always shows somehow. I can sense that their lives have been hard. Possibly even dangerous, too. Very. They're not like other children. It's a shame that I can't do more to help them. 
after thinking things over, I decided to tell them a bit about how I see the world. It's full of lies and falsehoods, and that is why we must find our own truth. Lenny Lynette got the really, like, the, the big scoop at a very young age. Obviously, events that happened beforehand, but even from Caesar. P.S. I hope they won't find my nagging annoying. Children are so opinionated nowadays. Will it do them more harm than good for someone they've only known 10 days to lecture them like that? P.P.S. <laughs> Maybe I'm overthinking this. Children aren't interested in grand philosophies. It probably just went in one ear and out the other. I bet they've already forgotten every word no, I said. No, they have not. Oh, Caesar, Caesar. Just mind your own business next time. I'm confused. Um, I mean, I know it's been 10 years, but you would think that they would recognize him or like, I mean, Lenny knew who he was, obviously, right? But like, I guess he didn't like look up to him like as a, you know, I mean, they were about to call him master for Pete's sake, right? You would think Lenny would be like, oh, you know, oh, but he probably did. And then his identity got revealed, and then it basically revoked all of it. Hmm. Two magic geniuses with a father and a mission, huh? Huh. I wonder what that sounds like, my mom. Sounds a lot like he was writing about Linny and Lynette, don't you think? No. <gasps> so did they meet Caesar hmm. when they were kids? Let's go ask Linny. Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't no way. My mind really is like the. Oh, you weren't paying attention, so this is what happened. That's what my mind is. My mind is if you're skipping through the story. Lenny. Lenny. Shh, hold that thought. As I expected, <laughs> there's a lot of fishy things going on in this place. Fishy? Uh-oh, what have you found? All in good time. Before we go over our new leads, I want to tell you how a high-altitude escape is performed. Uh oh First, the magician slots themselves into a magic box in full view of the audience. The box is then suspended high in the air, and a short while later, the base automatically opens. Ooh. So you like, fell out of it and just... I? At this point, a dummy will fall out of the box, but it looks real enough to grab the audience's attention, and they start wailing and screaming. Meanwhile, the real magician, who has by now blended into the crowd, <laughs> waits for a good moment to make their appearance and put on a hysterical performance. Oh no! Is that me? Did I just fall to my death? Oh no! Very vivid description. Paimon can really picture it! And then what? The audience's gaze then turns to the magician, and by the time they realize what's happened, the dummy has vanished. As if everything that just happened was some sort of shared illusion. Gosh, so imagine if some I mean the magician wouldn't even be inside of the box if the dummy was supposed to fall. So how on earth? Of course, that's just how I think the process should work, theoretically speaking. So, he didn't do that, did he? Theoretically speaking, what do you mean? The inventor of this trick never performed it successfully. When the box opened, Caesar was the one who fell out, and not the dummy. I mean, like... Why would you be in the box in the first place? Like, I guess it was that bad of a mistake. Yeah, I mean, didn't perform it successfully. Yeah, I guess it was that bad. He fell right to the ground from the highest point of the opera house. <sighs> no one could hope to survive that fall. Not without a vision, at least. How many people are going to die in that opera, that opera house? Like, seriously, how many people have perished in the opera house? Like, all the duels happened there, I believe. I believe. Um, you know, child's going crazy on the floor. Freaking, um, cow's dead. 
Like, it's just like, how many people are gonna die at that opera house? And no one else has ever attempted this trick since. My understanding of how it works is just based on what it could gather from his notes and the relevant gadgets here in his workshop. I remember that. Remember that guy, Caesar? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to do that trick again. So Caesar's famous high altitude escape has never been done, huh? Pyron was about to say how cool it would have been to see it in person, but if it's that dangerous, it's probably for the best that no one else tries to do it. You know, I mean, to be fair, magic tricks in real life are pretty dangerous, depending on which ones you do. Um, I.e. just looking at, like, David Blaine's performances and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's pretty freaking dangerous. Wait a second. So if a dummy is supposed to drop out of the box, then where does the real magician go? How does he get out? Glad you asked. That brings us to the secret of said box. This box right here is the one that Caesar constructed himself to use in the performance, and it's not as simple as it looks. Inside, there's a device that only the magician himself would know about. I would have thought like there'd be a floor under the platform of the box that you would just go down. Once the magician's inside and the box is lifted up into the air, the audience's view of the box is fixed at a certain angle. From where they're standing, they have a clear view of the front, sides, and bottom, but the back and the top are now no longer visible. At this point, the magician presses a button inside the box, opening a secret door out of view. So when he was up in the air, it was just GG's, huh? He then escapes through this trap door onto the opera house roof, waits for the dummy to fall and distract the audience, and quietly returns to ground level. He gets to the roof? How fast to get back down to the audience? That's way simpler than Paimon imagined. Even Paimon could probably do it. He could fly. <laughs> well, there's a little more to it than that, of course. The hardest part of this trick is controlling the audience's mood and reactions. That takes an exceptional degree of showmanship. There's the falling dummy, the miraculous reappearance, the pompous performing. Maybe the magician would even have themselves tied up before it begins to strengthen the impression that there's no escape. Many days and nights of careful research and painstaking practice would have gone into this, all culminating in a performance just a few minutes long, but one that still manages to transform the shock and grief of a tragic accident to the joy and laughter of a mesmerizing magic trick. No, that's all true. Yeah. Because they, they do like to go above and beyond, like, like you said, tie your hands up and really just kind of steal the show and put the fear in people. Caesar was a highly accomplished magician. But unfortunately, even he didn't manage to pull it off. Ah, dang, man. Seriously, how many people are going to die in the opera house? So, how did it go so wrong? You said you found some fishy stuff here. Have you figured out what really happened? I can make a pretty good guess. Maybe. Well, I don't know why the Phantom Thief would want Caesar to die. If they're di two different people, but maybe he like sabotaged it and no. Nah. I looked into the case files. The magic box Caesar was using at the time of his death had the secret button I mentioned positioned on the right hand side, and sure enough, he always used his right hand as his dominant hand in public. Maybe he got injured. Okay, nothing suspicious there. Okay. But here's the strange thing. Most of the devices in this workshop have the mechanism on the left-hand side, including this box right here, which leads me to believe that Caesar was in fact left-handed. So I'm not sure where you're going with this. Why would Caesar pretend to be right-handed? Because a magician can't afford to have their most basic habits stand out too much. People naturally focus their attention on the most important details of the task or situation at hand. But to that point, who cares what side it would be on then? But a magician needs to be able to redirect an audience's attention at will so as to avoid arousing their suspicion. Is he trying to let the audience know that he's right handed, but he's actually left handed? I don't see why that would be an important piece. The essence of magic is getting people to believe a lie. If even the truth raises eyebrows, the falsehoods become all the more difficult to mask. 
Nah, that's just going a little too far. <laughs> and so, Caesar trained himself to use his right hand to align with his audience's expectations. Great magic always requires sacrifices. I don't feel like that was worth it. But in his most stressful and nerve-wracking moments, and when no one was watching, Reflex would kick in and he'd use his left hand. That's why he set his gadgets with the mechanism on his left. Maybe someone has put that fat against him? Exactly. I think that's likely what happened. Someone, like, called him out for... Caesar would have been under a lot of time pressure during the escape. He'd have had mere seconds to open the hidden compartment, retrieve the dummy, then open the secret door and make a swift escape. But I'm sure he was confident. He would have rehearsed countless times to the point where it was second nature. He'd barely need to think about what he was doing because muscle memory would guide him through. And someone sabotaged the button and put it on the other side? But if he built it, then... So he opened the compartment, took out the dummy, checked everything was in order, and then went to leave. With his left hand, he reached for the button, and suddenly, his heart skipped a beat. It wasn't there. Oh, shoot. Dang. Much like when you reach for your keys but find your pocket empty, his mind needed a moment to process what was going on. Instinctively, his left hand would keep feeling around for the missing button, maybe for another second or two, until the bottom of the box gave way. Oh, so the bottom of the box just opens. I was thinking it was like you had to hit the button to make the box open at the bottom. Dang. So, yeah, but still, why? What happened with the button? With the stakes being as high as they were, just a two-second delay cost him everything. The authorities would find nothing suspicious and conclude that his death was due to his own error. I mean, yeah, I guess it was like two seconds, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Because even if he did, like, feel to the right and then be like, it's not there, you know, he could have at least, like, been like, okay, well, if it's not there, it's got to be over here. But at that point, you know, two seconds. What are you gonna do? But in reality, someone switched the boxes, and they did it to murder him. That is like an insanely convoluted way to take somebody out. Like you would have to be in their head, or no? I guess. Hmm. But how would they be able to make the switch without being noticed? Do you like study him and realize he was left handed or right handed? Nope, should have been amb ambidextrous. It would have to have been someone who knew that he was left handed and who could move his props around without arousing suspicion. Someone who was always by his side. Lorenzo. Isn't that right, Lorenzo? Ooh, dang, I didn't think he was going to be here. You just couldn't let sleeping dogs lie, could you? So this is a gang with them? The, the suited guys? There's not a lot of people who'd go to all this trouble for some magician who died 10 years ago. I didn't want to have to do this, you know. Yep. Silencing you the hard way just creates more problems for me to deal with. So why did you... Why? Why'd you kill him? Why'd you kill him? He was jealous? You wouldn't have the, the spotlight for yourself? But I gave you your chance. I hoped you'd do what's good for you and back off like the lady, but you disappoint me. That's messed up, man. Like, what? And still, why is he coming back? That's still the, the mystery here. You mean Gemma? So you are the one who's been threatening her! Yes, although however stubborn she might be, she was never much of a liability, but you people... You never even knew him, but for some reason you just wouldn't drop it. Which is why you can't leave this place alive. Take them out and make it quick. <laughs> Do your worst! Why is he coming back though? What? And god dang, man, why'd you kill him? <laughs> Defeat Lorenzo's men. <laughs> so this is actually kind of cool, like... It reminds me of like the Incredibles for some reason. These guys in suits. 
Look at him pointing. <laughs> Look at him just standing there. Get him. Interesting. Adventure time. Everybody stand back. Let the magic begin. Mm -hmm. Dudes in suits. Where did the last guy go? Oh. Ah, it's just so weird with the slots in different spots. <laughs> what was that was, that was more use of his idol oh, you kids are tougher than you look just like smack him in the back of the neck with a card had enough yet Lorenzo your cronies can't help you now cronies I think it's high time you started talking and what I'd really like to know is why did you murder Caesar and why is he returning uh, if I had a mora for every time you've said that man's name of course you idolized Caesar, everyone else did. But I was the real genius magician. Me! Okay, I can I can follow this, actually. That makes sense, so far. He was just an amateur who did cheap tricks for gullible children. I was the one who made magic into the fine art it is today. The aristocrats doffed their hats to me! So it was jealousy. Yeah, so the first thing I said. <laughs> Jealousy. Jealous. Hatred, more like. I hated Caesar. All he cared about was his magic. He lived and breathed it. He poured everything into his street performances and his stupid tours like it was just a hobby to him. Never bothering to think about Mora. What sort of fool devotes their life to the art of deception and never has a Mora to show for it? Somebody who is passionate about it? But the people loved him, didn't they? Oh, how they looked up to him. No one gave me a second look. All I ever heard was, Oh, your master's amazing, isn't he? Hmm. I actually like this arc, because... I think it was really cool that Lorenzo was, like, there. That really kind of, like, sealed the deal. Amazing. So amazing that he was completely broke. Every other apprentice was living it up at their master's expense, but no, not me. I put in all the work, mastered all the skills, and it brought me nothing more than the life I already had. I'm still confused, though. So why did you kill him? Why didn't you just leave? He forbade me from using magic to trick people out of their mora. There was nothing he hated more than that. He wasn't willing to accept Mora for his tricks? I mean, that would just be like gaining revenue for your tours. Like, how do you think he's going on tour? But he mentions like using magic to trick people into giving them their Mora. Obviously, he wouldn't want to do that, but like the organic way of just making money through tours is that should be fine right and with his reputation in fontaine it was too risky for me to go it alone as long as he was alive if i dabbled in my own brand of money making magic he would expose me and it would destroy me you couldn't just parted ways like uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, because he had a big reputation in Fontaine, so. But dang, man, you gotta kill somebody I had for to it. Kill him. There was no other way. He had to go. No, I mean, Fontaine's not the only region in the world. You could have went anywhere else and performed magic. You didn't have to go to. You could have went to Modstadt, Leeway, Inazuma. I mean, maybe those places might have had some other issues going on, but I mean, it doesn't matter what region you're in. Magic can be performed wherever you go. Hmm. And this was your only motive? 
It was reason enough. What other motive would I need? I'm confused why he couldn't just make money just doing what he does. It's not tricking people into giving you more. It would just be, you know, like Lenny. Lenny has people buy tickets for his show to see his show. And I'm sure it's not just Lenny. It's probably the opera epi class and, you know, it's a big cycle. Like you pay tickets to get a seat to watch the show. Well, I was under the impression that there might have been other factors at play. For instance, maybe you were in love with Gemma, but she was engaged to Caesar. Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> in love with Gemma? D don't be ridiculous. Oh, it's true. Look at his face. Guess I was wrong about that then. <laughs> Next question. Are you the Phantom Weasel? I mean, yeah, most likely. I am. Yep. Okay. <laughs> That was, that was like the most gratifying. Yep, I am. Yep, that's me. I did it. Caesar was so strict with me. Here's me. He insisted that his way was the right way. That the sole purpose of magic was to bring joy to the world. I mean, god dang it, guys. You could have just did the magic shows, got revenue for it, and then split it. I never bought into any of that. Didn't have to I steal was anything. In the practical value of magic. Sure enough, it helped me fill my pockets with all kinds of valuable treasures. Maybe I'm thinking about the real world too much, and maybe it's different here. Heard of had that weasel stole from the rich and the poor alike. Oh yeah! Charlotte told us that the weasel would steal whatever people valued, no matter how much he was worth. Well, that's just how it looked from the outside. What would any thief want with second-rate loot? I've only ever targeted high-value items. I stole cheap things as a way of practicing my craft. It was other people's overactive imaginations that conjured up the preposterous image they then dubbed the Phantom Weasel. Other people's overreactive imaginations? Because now I'm confused to why... Did you put the reputation of the Phantom Weasel on Caesar? I mean, obviously, right? But like, if that's the case. So that's the story, huh? Well, I hope you're ready to tell it all over again during your trial. What choice do I have? You're a pack of wolves and you've got me between your jaws. You've seen what's here, and my last-ditch effort to stop it getting out has failed. What else can I do? Uh, so be it. Lorenzo. I've enjoyed power and wealth for the last ten years. The likes of which Caesar could never give me. I wouldn't choose for things to end this way. But I regret nothing. Very well. In that case, I'll contact the guards. I mean, hey, you got away with it for ten years. Traveler, Paimon. Keep an eye on Lorenzo for me. I'll meet you just outside the workshop when I'm back. And also, he would have been fine if he just didn't say he was coming back for... In three days. But still, why did you mention you were coming back in three days? Why did you even mention that? If you didn't mention that, nobody would have ever... Gotten the talk about the weasel thief again. Charlotte would have never even thought about it. And you would have kept on stealing things you would have been fine at least i can finally stop looking over my shoulder now your plan was flawed why did you it's not even your plan why did you mention that why are you coming back or why is the weasel thief coming back or why is caesar i don't get it Like, he would have been fine. He's been going for 10 years. He could have just kept going and kept stealing stuff. He was fine. Hmm. I don't know why he did that. You would have literally been in the clear still if you didn't do that. Lily has told me the whole story. Guards. Good on Mars. Lorenzo, do you confess to the murder of Caesar and to framing him for the Phantom Weasel's crimes? 
you know, for the land of justice, you guys uh, really miss a lot of cases. Hmm. <laughs> Look who's finally developed a conscience. Ten years later. I like it's Lori. What kind of disciple murders their own master? I hope it was worth it. Because they'll be hell to pay. Now I'll just confiscate his items and he'll, he'll pay it off. <sighs> Looks like it's all over. What should we do next, Lenny? Should we start preparing for your show? I bet you his boys could actually, like, bail him out. If there is such thing as a bail from the, um, the prison. Huh, let me think. Let's rendezvous with Lynette and Gemma first. With Lorenzo in custody, Gemma will no longer have to fear for her safety. We should go tell Gemma the good news right away. It'll give the us good a news. peace of mind for sure. What was it again? It was like the Mason, the Mason something. Yanfei mentioned it a little bit ago in her birthday notes. The Mason Guardianage, yeah. That's the prison in Fontaine. I wonder if it's like it's like a, a bail system. Cause I mean, he, you know, like he st stole his money, stole his way to get Mora. So why did you even mention that you were gonna do it though? Oh, that guy is just the same way. It was him too. Get him. They are still here. Ah, you're back. <laughs> ah. You were so quick. I've only just finished my third dessert. Third? Your third? Lynette, come on. We've talked about this. Everything in moderation. You're not going to have any room left for dinner now. It's fine. I'll shift to exercise mode and jog off the excess sugar. <laughs> uh, don't worry. You won't, you won't gain a single inch. That's besides the point. <sighs> well, Character model's locked. Now, but try to eat a more balanced diet in the future. <sighs> point taken. <laughs> See, there you go. That's the kind of faces I anticipate, like, more <laughs> expressive faces. Did everything go okay? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Of course! Lorenzo was no match for us. The guards are taking him into custody as we speak. Gosh, that's amazing. I'm sorry. I still didn't know if I could trust you, but now it seems I can. Did they pick up the guys who were, like, a part of his gang, too? I mean, we, we knocked them out, so I'm assuming they grabbed them, too. I had my suspicions about Lorenzo, but I... <laughs> it's okay. We understand. He did threaten you. Gemma would find it hard to trust strangers in your position, too. God dang, can you imagine being Gemma and watching that performance and just watching Caesar fall out of that thing and hit the ground? But you don't need to be scared anymore. God dang. Sorry. Sorry. My emotions are all over the place right now. I've been waiting for this day to come for so long. Come on, Hayo. You gotta, you gotta add a tear going down, too. I always wanted to report Lorenzo. He took all of Caesar's property, which I found suspicious. But I had people watching me all the time, so I couldn't risk looking into it. Yeah, especially just being by yourself. It's risky. I was so afraid. I was scared he'd do something terrible to me. And then no one would be left to visit Caesar's grave. So I never had the courage to speak out. Dang, for ten years. I mean, it's understandable. But, you know. Thank you all. Truly. Thank you so much. In the session, everyone goes to the cemetery. And now see a rest for the Thank Renzo. you all for clearing Caesar's name. I never would have guessed that Lorenzo was the real phantom weasel. He never showed any signs that there were problems between him and Caesar in public. From the outside, it looked like they got along great. That was the plan. Uh, to think that Lowlife's been living life to the fullest all this time while Caesar's name was getting dragged through the mud. It's a travesty. At least his soul can finally rest in peace now. Thanks to your efforts. <laughs> Gemma. If, if only I'd realized. 
before it was too late. About 11 years too late. Don't blame yourself, Gemma. This isn't your fault. And you couldn't have really done much. The only thing you probably could have done was just be suspectful of Lorenzo. But I mean, how would you be? Yeah, you still have the rest of your life to live. Caesar wouldn't want to see you spending it feeling guilty. Hmm. Cheer up, Gemma. My brother's doing a magic show at the Opera House tomorrow evening. Would you like to come along? It might raise your spirits. No. I don't want to ever go to a magic show ever again if I'm Gemma. This show will be a special one. We're holding it in Caesar's honor. Would never, especially if I was there and saw Caesar fall to his death, I would never want to enter the Opera Epic Plus again. In Caesar's honor? Really? Oh, thank you. I'll be there. <laughs> Great. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Traveler, Paimon, don't be late. Don't worry, we'll be there. No way are we gonna miss out on a free magic show. Oh, so I suppose it is free? Wait, Paimon feels like we're forgetting something. But if we're saying it's free, then I imagine <gasps> oh, yes, sometimes it's not. We never found out if the two kids Caesar taught magic to were Linny and Lynette or not. Oh, they were. Linny changed the topic back in the workshop, so we didn't get a chance to bring it up. Oh, well. Guess we'll just have to ask Linny tomorrow evening. I've spoken many choice words about Caesar over the years. I'm so ashamed of myself now. He was such a good man. Dang. Ah, uh, you know. People will talk. I can't believe Lorenzo was intimidating Gemma all this time. Have you met Le uh, Lorenzo before? He comes around here sometimes. Not to clean Caesar's grave, though. He just stands off to the side and watches Gemma from a distance. She must have known, but she never asked him to leave. I wonder why that is. Creepy. It may take some time, but Caesar's reputation will be restored now that the real culprit has been captured. Looks like Gemma chose a good man after all. Yeah, and even, even he was saying, like... Even he was saying, you know, Caesar was like, oh, what a low life scumbag, this, that, and a third. Gemma doesn't deserve someone like that. But, I mean, you know, how could you have known, right? The organ makes this place seem like it is like a funeral, because <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> the amount of people who've died. There's Lynette, Jenna, and Charlotte. Prepare for us this time. Oh, the anticipation. It's killing me. Oh, and how could I forget? Thank you both for capturing Lorenzo. Now that this decade long case of the Phantom Weasel has finally been put to rest, Dude, we are I'm good. Go through my notes and put it all together into the most spectacular special column piece to ever grace the pages of the Steambird. We did that like done and dusted. But to be fair, we did it because because he let people know he said that he was coming back in three days and like that's the reason why the talk even began in the first place it wouldn't have if he didn't do that and people are here <laughs> magically Not this time. My brother's going solo today. It's going solo. So, I'll be watching with you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody's ready because the show is about to begin. I just, I can't with the Opera Epic Quest anymore. Like, after the first couple acts and the past events that have happened, this place is off. <laughs> the great magician Linny has prepared a spectacular show for us all tonight concluding with an all-new grand finale that no audience has ever seen before. The audience, stop clapping. Let him speak. Wow! A new Thank you all so much for coming. They're not now, even clapping. Prepare to join me on a journey through the mystical and miraculous. <laughs> oh, 
There you go. What is this? What is this animation? What happened to them? What is this? Oh no. What do they do? Exciting stuff, isn't it? Yes, it's just... It, it reminds me of him. That's what I was saying. Like, I would not want to come back here if that happened. It was so tragic. No wonder. Caesar was a famous magician, too. So, how did you two first meet, Gemma? Hmm? Well, I was out on the street once, and I saw him performing for little children. Children love magic because they're willing to believe in things that can't be rationally explained. Caesar had this amazing way of bringing them into a dreamlike world. And somehow, I felt drawn to him too. So I went up and asked him to do a trick for me. Hmm. Aww, that sounds so romantic. What trick did he do? He made a ring appear on her finger. It was with a flower. He took it in his hand, snapped his fingers, and it magically appeared on my head. I was so happy that day. No one had ever given me a flower before that. No? Never? Oh, that's so cute! Uh, actually, now that you mention it, Lenny's done that one before. Is that right? Then I suppose he's a romantic at heart, just like Caesar. Hmm. So, let's treasure the time we have with him. But I, sometimes, like, Hayao will shock me with certain things, and then sometimes they just... Then this happens. Like, what, what is going on up here? I'm sorry. After all, you never know when the people dearest to you might be gone. It's true. No, no, what you're saying is true. Let's not, let's not like, gloss over that. That's right. It's all over now. Um... Paimon doesn't really know how to comfort you, but at the very least, no one's going to be intimidating you from now on. You can breathe easy at last, right? Yeah, I hope. Right. Yes, you can breathe easy now, Phantom Weasel. See? Even Lynette says... Wait, what? Huh? The Phantom Weasel? Lorenzo escaped? Where is he? Uh, what do you mean, Phantom Weasel? Huh? As Linny once said, a performer's job is to commit fully to their role and put on a flawless performance for their audience. But once the bag of tricks is empty and the curtain falls, it's time to end the show. The spotlight is no place for someone with no more cards up their sleeve. It's been ten years, Gemma. Aren't you tired of the Grieving Widow Act? I think it's time to put an end to it. What? What are you talking about? Uh, Paimon doesn't like this riddle. Traveler, Paimon doesn't like where this is going. <laughs> Come on, say something. Uh, sorry, Paimon, we are, we cannot speak, so. <sighs> what the heck are you talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, I Annette? hope you're all enjoying the performance so far. Now, this goes back to what I was saying, where it's like, they would have to know what happened 10 years ago. They couldn't have just forgotten. There will now be a brief intermission after which Linny will perform the most electrifying act of tonight's show. The one we've all been waiting for. What the heck was she talking about, though? The final performance will take place outside of the Opera House, so please make your way outside in a calm and orderly fashion. The Phantom Weasel never did like public places, did they? What is happening? <laughs> Don't worry. This place will be quiet soon. Let's talk somewhere else for now. What is happening? Go somewhere quiet and ask about the truth? Ain't no way you've been... Huh? They just flipped everything upside down for me. Spill it.
So then what was all the... <laughs> Dear me, this is awkward, isn't it? And unfortunately, I'm all out of gadgets, so I'm afraid I can't do any tricks to liven up the mood. This is a big mistake for a magician to make, but thankfully, I do have a backup plan. Now, who wants to hear a story? Wait, did Lenny do his performance? Did we just, like, we just don't see it? I'm actually with you, Paimon. I don't know. All in good time. Magicians are good at guessing what people are thinking. I know the questions you want to ask. And as it happens, the story I'm about to tell might answer a few of them. Really? Well then, let's hear it! Paimon's dying of curiosity here! Let's go back to the very beginning. A decade ago, when the Phantom Weasel was terrorizing the Court of Fontaine, Okay. She never missed a target, never left a trace, and no treasure was safe from her thieving hands. So Lorenzo's not the Phantom Weasel. But as her infamy grew, so did the readiness of the police, and her opportunities to act became ever fewer. Every day, she ran the risk of being exposed for who she was. Of course, what? she could not simply take this lying down, and before long, she found her ticket to freedom. She would create a scapegoat, a false weasel, to close the chapter on her behalf. After weighing her options, she set her sights on a renowned magician, Caesar. After all, magic and theft shared enough similarities for people to buy the story when the truth came out. So why did Lorenzo say it was him? So then what? Being the master deceiver she was, the weasel easily earned Caesar's trust. Now all that remained was to frame him for her countless crimes. But as she was considering how to make her move, she noticed Caesar's aggrieved pupil, and a new thought entered her mind. Maybe I don't need to get my hands dirty after all. This changes like the whole story, and my goodness, poor Caesar, man. Sheesh, she's getting freaking double time by her and Lorenzo. At her encouragement, Lorenzo tampered with Caesar's magic box, causing him to fall to his death. At her encouragement? Bottom left hand corner, sorry, I'm covering. At her encouragement, Lorenzo tamper tampered with Caesar's magic box, causing him to fall to his death. Afterwards. Lorenzo seized his master's property, and the weasel set about tarnishing Caesar's reputation. Two co-conspirators committed the perfect crime. <sighs> I've got to hand it to you. You're both exceptional storytellers. It's enough to make even me wonder whether there was really another mastermind behind all this pulling the strings what is happening but i just have one question you seem to think that i am the villain in this tale what's brought this on linny is it something that lorenzo said don't worry lorenzo said nothing at all lorenzo said it was him but i never believed that he was the weasel and in fact my investigation only made me more certain of that he was too forthcoming with his confession as if there was something else he was trying to hide. That's <laughs> true, he did say. Yep, it was me. It was me. How disappointing. So you'd sooner trust Lorenzo than me? Even without a shred of evidence? What is happening? A magician is an expert at playing the audience to get the result they want. And I have no doubt that you, Gemma, are equally talented in this regard. With a little help from Lorenzo, you put on a very convincing performance. The lovesick fiancé, whose devotion to her betrothed is unshakable, even under threats of violence. Caesar was maligned and hated by all for ten years, but you? Everyone sympathized with your plight. Who would suspect for one second that the lovely young lady always seen weeping in front of Caesar's grave was actually the mastermind behind his demise? No, not that poor lady. Uh, perish the thought. So she was the one that said he was returning in three days? 
This is like completely flipped upside down. Wait, so you mean the whole intimidation thing was just a hoax? Gemma and Lorenzo were both in on it? But why would Lorenzo agree to that? And why didn't he sell her out even at the end instead of admitting to being the weasel himself? Yes, why indeed. Hmm. Maybe Gemma herself could enlighten us on that question. And also, why is Caesar dead? Like, what? Well, Linny, if you're so confident in your version of events, then I think the answer should be obvious. Having killed Caesar with his own hands, Lorenzo was plagued by overwhelming guilt. Revealing the Phantom Weasel's true identity would serve no purpose. But... If the weasel remained free, then she could take care of Lorenzo's loved ones. An excellent answer, though sadly a little dull. <laughs> Is that right? Well, don't let me bore you. If you'd care to change the topic to something more interesting, I'd be much obliged. No bless. As a matter of fact, there's one thing I'd really like to understand. There's a whole lot I would like to understand. What? Why would the real weasel have targeted things that only have value to other people? Could you shed any light on that? Of course. After all, we're just telling stories here, aren't we? I don't know, are we? If I had to guess, I would say that the real weasel must have had a terrible childhood. Left to fend for herself after her parents died young. Betrayed. Scorned. Beaten. Oof. She'd scrounge waste paper from garbage bins to draw on. Using twigs and dirt for lack of ink and pen. She'd sew ugly ragdolls from whatever scrap material she could get her hands on. This was her only source of happiness in life. But it was all she needed. And she was content. Until the world decided that even this was too good for her. Once again, she was betrayed. And this time, everything mm. was taken from her. She felt like life was a miry pit that dragged her further down the more she struggled to escape. At that tender age, she should have been happy. Instead, she stood in the shadows and watched with envy as all good things in the world passed her by. What do you mean by that exactly? This was a fate too cruel for anyone to bear. Her pain became a breeding ground for dark thoughts. Thoughts which festered and grew into a twisted solution to her troubles. I detest the happiness of others, in all its forms alike. I will rob them of everything they hold to be good and true. And it will fill the void in my soul. No, That's I won't. Was he just referring to yourself? Now it all makes sense. Does this story satisfy you, Linny? Yes, it is quite to my tastes. Thank you for helping to clear up my confusion. So what was the warning letter? Warning letter? Huh. That's right. What drove you to write that letter, Gemma? What were you trying to achieve there? Because without that, none of this would have ever come to light. Exactly. Now, of course, I didn't know it was her, obviously, but I was saying the same thing at the time. She didn't write the letter. <gasps> After ten long years, I'd hoped that the Phantom Weasel would be consigned to the history books by now. But it seems like someone still wasn't ready to let her finally be at peace. Linny. Or should I call you the Phantom Copycat now? You were the one who posted that letter outside the opera house. But why? Very sharp, Phantom Weasel. Still as shrewd as ever. Ooh. Ooh. You did it, Lenny. Was it you? Well, no need for me to be coy about it. Our goal was to clear Caesar's name. What about ten years ago? The most straightforward way to change the public's impression of Caesar was to force the weasel to show themselves. Uh, that's it? You had no other agenda? 
<laughs> okay. So I think this is trying to go back to him trying to clear his name, as he said, because hopefully, like I was saying, they looked up to him as kids and they appreciated Caesar. And now they know the truth. And now they're trying to clear his name out of respect for him. Of course we did. We made it quite clear in the letter, I believe. I shall take from you that which you hold most dear, just as you did to me ten years ago. His life? Uh, ten years ago? You mean Caesar's death? You oh, okay. So this is coming together as I thought. Wait. Oh, I get it. You were those two obnoxious kids. It's been so long, and you're all grown up now. I didn't recognize you. I mean, that's fair you didn't recognize them, but how do you not recognize them? <laughs> he taught you magic back then, didn't he? For, what, ten days or something? <laughs> and you went to all this trouble. Why? Because you feel like you still owe him something? Why do you disrespect Caesar so bad? What did he do to you? I. Why does Caesar have to die, man? Unless the Lorenzo thing is still at fault. But yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they took care of them. I well, not take care of them, but they Caesar respected them, and that was their grand wish was to know how to do magic, and he taught them. We remember all our debts, however great or small. And also, Lenny Lynette were on the street with nothing. Ten years ago, Caesar's reputation was torn to shreds and his legacy was thrown out. Ten years on and no one cares what the truth is anymore. But we did not forget. And so we came to find you. And? What exactly did you take from me? I'm still standing, as you can see. Lorenzo has admitted to everything. I'm free. Not if he had something to say for it now. <laughs> when he just takes out the first great magic. Free? <laughs> Do you really think so? And your other hand. Caesar once told me that even though the world is filled with lies and falsehoods, we must find our own truth. Well, he sure did. I think that applies to you too. Truth can take many forms. Prized possessions with nostalgic value, fervent hopes and dreams, and irreplaceable people. Life took many things from you, and those wounds never healed. When they ached unbearably in the dead of night, stealing became your way of numbing the pain. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that for the last ten years, you've been living a rather uneventful life. Perhaps that's because well. you found something other than a life of crime to fill the hole? Back to Lorenzo for a second. He murdered his own master, played along with your act, and took okay. pains to make sure any suspicion would be directed towards him. But what did he have to gain from all that? Please don't say what I think you're going to say. He knew who you were and the things you'd done, and despite that, he was willing to give everything up for your sake. He's the reason that you haven't felt the compulsion to steal in all these years. To fall in love with him too? You're more than or just accomplices in murder. You're the only real friends each other has. So I think you know, deep down, that he is the only truth you have in your life. But that truth is gone now. And I guarantee you, you'll never see it again. Dang, so he's locked up for life? <laughs> God dang, Lenny, you like, you guys are good. Like, I literally am trying to process everything. And everything's just going over my head. And I'm just like, every single moment is just like flipped around. Congratulations on your freedom, Gemma. Dang. Dang. Your freedom will cost you dearly. From now on, you'll be all alone in a world full of lies and falsehoods. I do hope you'll be able to bear it. Sheesh. You've still got a long life ahead of you, after all. 
He mentioned that before. By this time, it's condescending. Gather round, one and all. The time has now come for the amazing Linny to perform his final act in tonight's show. Dang, the twins don't play, man. Wow. I was literally like, I thought I was like thinking of the right things. And I mean, some were right, but most of it was just like, the last person I suspected was Gemma herself. Was there any like, Things that was alluding to that during the quest, because I, I missed it. I'm sure you're all wondering what he has planned for the grand finale. Well, wonder no more, for the answer is a death defying high altitude escape. Oh, he's gonna do it? No. High altitude escape. Ten years ago, that trick that Caesar died attempting. I'm sure you all remember the magician Caesar. This was the very trick that led to his fatal fall. After which he was dubbed the Phantom Weasel. So we have now learned that Caesar was wrongly accused, and that the real Weasel has now confessed to their crime. He's gonna do it? Seriously? That's my cue to leave. Whew. I've been practicing this one for ages now, but I'm still a little nervous. Oh, that explains the allotment of time. Traveler, Paimon, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. There may be a lot of people watching tonight, but you alone are my true witnesses. Well, you better do it right, Lenny. <laughs> you better do it right. Lenny, wait. You two hid a lot from Caesar. He went to his grave without ever knowing your secrets. So what about now? Are you an open book? Or are you still the same as ever? You don't have to tell lies to end up isolated and alone. One day, you'll end up exactly where I am today. Maybe <laughs> then you'll finally understand. Lynette just looks so like she's mad, but. You're wrong. I'm nothing like you. <laughs> Damn. I mean, he's right. Like. Obviously, we know about Lenny's truth and, and Lynette, too. But Lenny and Lynette were never bad people. Well, they may be in that organization, technically. They're not bad individuals, right? They just had to do what they had to do to get by. Gemma is a thief. So, uh, what are we, uh, doing now? And we're watching the show. Like Lenny said, when you're ready... Let's head outside and watch the show. But what about Gemma? She'll figure out what's best for her soon enough. <laughs> oh, and if you'd like to see Lenny after the show, you know where he'll be. The usual haunt. Haunt. Alright. Well, let's go and watch Lenny's finale. Then. Even Pymon's confused. This trick's a pretty dangerous one, but she should be able to pull it off, right? The twins don't play, man. Dang, what the heck? Magicians are not like thieves. Thieves only tear things apart. But good-hearted magicians, they put things back together. There you go, man. I love that. I love how we got that circled back from what we've been hearing for through the Archon quest and the beginning of this quest line. Me the status a little bit i love how that came back around you know what is my truth <laughs> sometimes i think i'm like a gambling addict <sighs> do you play getchen all i care about is winning and it doesn't matter what's at stake by the time i come to my senses I'm left with nothing. Oh, if I had my time again. I mean, also, you're kind of up there in age. I don't really think you have your whole life ahead of you, as Lynette was saying. Or Lenny. But yeah, man, I, I love how that transpired. How it went from... It went from, like, magicians are like thieves. They're very similar, you know, yada yada yada. But now Lenny, or Lynette ends with that uh that note it's a very good one 
All right, let's see how the show goes. Apparently it's outside. And it's just like so many twists and turns. Like, I was just like, what? Hmm. Charlotte. Woo! Oh my goodness. This is next level. How did you get up there? Magic should be mysterious, surprising, and defy logic. Magic is hard work. Oh. Every single movement has to be practiced thousands of times. It's all right. We're used to that. Oh my gosh, the long hair. <laughs> We're sorry. You've taught us so much, but we can't tell you the whole truth. Is that Bennett? <laughs> it's okay. Do you still remember what I told you? This Look world is them. full of lies and falsehoods. The tale. I only hope that one day you can find your own truth. <sighs> What about you? Have you found your truth? Magic is my truth. I want to perform a magic trick so great that people will always think of me when they talk about it. For a magician, what greater honor could there be? Look! Oh, oh wow. He is sealed inside the box. Will he manage to escape? Ten years ago, Caesar attempted this very trick, and it was at this precise moment that... Uh, uh, Watch out! <laughs> huh? Bro, this art style is sick. Mysterious. Surprising. Like, what am I watching right now? And logic defying. Isn't that right? This honor belongs to you, Caesar. I'm just sorry it's a little late. Oh man, dude, that is like. Did you see that? One minute he was falling, and the next he turned into flowers. That was ridiculous. Like, what was that art style? That's like a whole different art style. Even like Paimon, like completely different. I knew like they were had to like look up to Caesar somehow in some way after reading the diary. It was just like it just made the most sense to me, and that's why it was kind of jarring that. That wasn't evident yet, but it just took a, it took a little bit to get to it. But damn, that was a good cutscene. How could he possibly have done that? And he's dead. How mysterious! I didn't blink <laughs> once. He just vanished right in front of my eyes. What a heart-stopping magic show! This was really worth the trip. Caesar's name has finally been cleared, and Fontaine's new star magician Linny has fulfilled the right, see you later. Oh, I couldn't ask for a better grand finale. It will make a great headline for the Steambird tomorrow, even if I do say so myself. Hmm. Ooh, looks like everyone really loves Linny's grand finale. Okay, but seriously though, where is Linny? Even though they don't know the full story. I'm The cemetery. Oh, you mean the one where Caesar's buried? Yeah, that's probably it. This whole magic show kind of seemed like Linny's. How the heck did he end up there? Caesar. So it makes sense that that's where he'd be afterward. Like immediately, or do you just mean like he walked over there after the? All right, let's go look for him there. Performance. Man, what a cutscene that was, dude! Like, what the heck? Oh, nice. What was that cutscene? That was like actually ridiculous. I knew they had to look up to him somehow. I was like, there's no way he's just gonna 
brush that off. You know what I mean? Like, I would have thought that he would, because, like, even in the beginning, he was like, well, I guess we were talking about him as the Phantom Menace, or Phantom Menace, the Phantom um, Weasel, and he was like, yeah, I'd be aggravated if he was on the same day as my performance, but I don't know. It kind of feels a little bit abrupt with how many twists happen at the end there, but let's see how it plays out. Like, I guess he's just that good of an actor. He didn't shed a tear at all. Um, are you all right? Paimon was scared to death when the chain broke. Paimon was sure something had gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Magic is a performance art. A magician has to get creative to keep the audience on tenterhooks. That's our job. So I tweaked Caesar's original setup a little to keep it fresh. I was honestly a little nervous during the live performance. The thought of falling... Suddenly feeling weightless, seeing the sky and the ground spinning and spinning. This theme. Sometimes, I can't help but wonder what Caesar thought in those final moments. I mean, he probably thought, oh my god, I'm going to die. Did he regret taking Gemma and Lorenzo on? Or did he believe that it was his own slip up right until the end? You know... Paimon's been wanting to ask you about something ever since we were in Caesar's workshop. You learned magic from Caesar once, didn't you? When was that? After I joined the House of the Hearth. To be honest, Lynette and I had an agenda when we approached him. Damn. It's, it's, it's crazy seeing that name in the game, House of Hearth. After, like, reading through... Like Arlequino's lore and stuff like that outside of the game. It's like so cool to see that. An agenda? I told you about my past before, remember? As a young boy, I survived by secretly learning magic from street performers. I'd watch their tricks and try to figure out how they were done. Oh, I thought it was just I thought it was just Caesar. Just anybody? Okay. But I quickly realized that observation alone could only get me so far. What I saw was the polished final performance. But the rigorous training they put in behind the scenes remained invisible to me. I needed to learn how to improve my sleight of hand, hone my misdirection skills, and make niftier props. We were gifted enough that we'd made some progress by ourselves. But without proper guidance from a professional magician, we quickly plateaued. So that's why you sought Caesar out? Yes. We figured there was no harm in asking. But it took us by surprise right. that he was so willing to teach us. In all, we only spent ten short days together, but he was very good to us. By contrast, we hid so many things from him. I mean, did he really have a choice? For instance, when he asked why I wanted to learn magic, I answered, it's my passion. But in truth, there was already a lot more to the story by then. After being taken in by an aristocrat for our magic talent, then betrayed soon after, this was no longer about me doing what I loved. What amazed me was how the lie escaped my lips even as I was hesitating over whether to tell him the truth. Trust is a beautiful thing. Sadly, I'd forgotten how to trust by then. Mm, that don't blame you whatsoever. Lenny. Yep. I don't blame you. It wasn't your fault. Still worried about the way I feel? <laughs> you really are a gentle soul, aren't you? But don't worry. I'm used to it now. From the mansions of the elite to the house of the hearth, lies and selfishness have followed me and Lynette everywhere we go. Also just, yeah, exactly. After Caesar went on tour, we became busy with our missions. The next we heard of him was that he'd fallen to his death. And was now declared to be the Phantom Weasel. That was a rude awakening. That night, I remembered his smile. But as I lay there, I didn't know what to say to him. To keep secrets is to put up walls. The longer you keep them up, the less you let people in. Then, one day, you look around and realize your life is like an empty auditorium after a show. Full of seats once occupied by all the people who left. 
But I guess that's the price we have to pay. Dang. You only realize how much someone really meant to you when you lose them completely. That's why I was so confident this would hurt Gemma. Because I felt it for myself. Mm. Still did not see the whole Gemma thing coming, but his, this plan made sense. We're in your auditorium and we're not going anywhere. during our journey too but whatever happens Paimon always believes in what tomorrow brings delicious food fun toys and the traveler by my side don't be so sure Paimon just needs to focus <laughs> on things like this and all the unhappy stuff goes right out the window um you know traveler doesn't that kind of make you Paimon's truth exactly it's the same for me and Lynette we are the truest thing each other has in the world, and nothing can replace that. Hmm. So I guess it's more like Lenny and Lynette, and then Fermine on the side. Life has taken plenty from us like it did from Gemma, but at least it left us with each other. That's what gave us the strength to get through the darkest days. That's why the darkness never consumed me and why it never will. Maybe we live in the shadows too, but we remember every precious ray of light that shines through. The darkness never consumed me. All right. Time to lighten this conversation up a little. What did you think of the show tonight? Were you happy with it? Oh, very. It was amazing! Because that was... I just wishes we hadn't been so distracted with the Gemma situation. We spent most of our time in the Opera House just talking and pretty much missed the entire first half of the show. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, Lenny, could you do just one more trick for us? Whoa, that's a bit of a tall order, I'm afraid. The show's just finished, so my sleeves are decidedly card-free right now. <laughs> Aw, come on! Surely you can think of something. The Lenny Paimon knows can do anything if he puts his mind to it. Oh, all right then. I'll give it a go, but only because it's you. Watch closely. Hmm. I have a flower in my hand. Do you? You liar! There's nothing in your hand! <laughs> we are going along with this! We ain't. Huh? My goodness, you're right. But I could have sworn I brought one here with me. Hmm. Okay, try this. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Now, have another look around. Uh, oh. Maybe the flowers appeared somewhere else. In that same spot. Really? Let's see. Nothing. Oh, there it is! Oh, this is a different flower from the last time, right? This one's called, um, oh yeah, a rainbow rose. But more importantly, Paimon has to know how the trick is done. Please, Lenny, please. Can't tell. It's the secrets. Well, if you want to learn magic, you'll have to start by addressing me as teacher. Ugh. Fine. Please, teacher, please. <sighs> Since you asked so nicely, what is happening? I'll <laughs> share one little tip with you. Namely, the student of magic cannot solely rely on others being prepared to reveal their secrets. You have to observe, think, and find the answers for yourself. Is that it? Ah, look at the time. We oh. shouldn't linger here too long. Thanks again for coming to see my show. I bid you both good night. I look forward to seeing you again. <sighs> All right, fine. See hmm. ya. Shall we head back down too? <laughs> Paimon can't wait to read the Steambird tomorrow. Paimon bets Linny and Caesar will be plastered all over it. Let's head to the Steambird's offices tomorrow morning and see what we can find out. Okay. A delightful encounter. Flowerly, a flowery, flowery accessory given away by Lenny at his magic show. It is an arrangement of uh, Lemido spells with symbolized parting and rainbow roses that represent passion. Parting and passion are two separate perspectives sharing the same nature. What really matters is the present that we are living in. I like the play on the flowers too. So 
Yeah, I'll, let me not talk too much until the quest is finished, or almost done, looks like. Off to the steam bird. I'm very sorry, Charlotte, but my sister and I are quite busy Oh, today. here we go. I'm afraid we'll have to decline this interview. Oh, please, Liddy, I'll only take a moment of your time, if you would be so kind. Huh? What's happening here? It's begging. Yo, King. I spent all night writing my piece about the Phantom Weasel, and it was going to go to print this morning. But just as dawn broke, I suddenly received news that Caesar's fiance Gemma, had contacted the guards and confessed to having been the real Phantom Weasel all along. Two weasels. That was quick. <clears throat> hmm? Too late, bro. Too late, bro? Wait, what? <laughs> that was quick, you say? It sounds like I've got some catching up to do. Please, fill me in. Huh? <laughs> Whoops. Oh, oh, Paimon. That was quick. Aha! My instincts did not lead me astray. You do have something to hide. Gemma turning herself in must have something to do with Linny's performance last night. <laughs> Too late, bro. Maybe watching my high altitude escape trick reminded her of a better time with Caesar, and she could no longer ignore the voice of her conscience. Huh. That was kind of okay, deep, Lenny. Wait, no, 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 there must be more to it. If that's all it took for her to have a change of heart, how did it take her ten whole years? Um, well... It's because he didn't do that in ten years. We finally brought it back. To attention in 10 years. Shell's uh, journalistic spirit is burning red. We have to, uh, we're going to have to distract her somehow. Oh, I remember now. You and Gemma were nowhere to be found after the show. What happened between you? Quick fire question. Where did you all go after the show? <laughs> Quick fire question. Oh, we went to the cemetery and Linny did a private magic trick just for us. Actually, glad you mentioned it, because that reminds Paimon, guess what? Linny started using rainbow roses in his tricks. It was more romantic. <clears throat> what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't recall ever having received a rainbow rose from you myself. Is this supposed to mean <sighs> that they're more important to you than your own sister? Uh-oh. No, I, I just... Uh... Too late, bro. <laughs> Did Paimon say something wrong again? She said, what? <laughs> this is getting pretty awkward. What do we do, Traveler? No, oh, keep talking, Paimon. <sighs> Seems like this interview wasn't it's interesting. Well, never mind. There's always next time. Forgive my persistence, but when there's explosive news waiting to be found, I can't turn away. The news about Gemma has already made waves, and I'll stop at nothing to get to the bottom of it all. Apparently, one of the things she said to the guards was that her final wish is to see Lorenzo one last time. Ah, oh, there's clearly a web of complicated relationships there. Can't blame yeah, you for no being kidding. curious. Yeah, no kidding. Huh? Alright, I guess I'll leave you to continue the rest of your conversation in peace. Bye for now. Yeah, that, that all those twists happened uh, so fast. Bye, Charlotte. I wish you could have been in 4.1. <laughs> Don't worry, I wasn't angry. I was just trying to distract her. Oh, really? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, you you guys, can't buy guys really are actors. Phew. You and me both, Paimon. You and me both. At least it did the job, right? Please, take good care of that rainbow rose. I'd be really upset if you lost it. And there you have it. That was good, man. I, uh, are they, just, are they gone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're gone. So. I do kind of feel like it was a little bit abrupt with the ending there, because like we kind of led up to that whole situation. Um, but I do like the idea of like thievery and magicians kind of being very similar to each other. And then towards the end, Lynette mentions how we're not alike because um, thievery is thievery. You guys steal stuff and never give it back. All magicians make it reappear. And, you know, it's obviously a, a positive notion. Um, 
and yeah, love the cutscene at the end with, with like Lynette, little little Lynette with the long hair, and little Lenny, and just the art style of it was really different too. It was like kind of just unique from what we used to, and you know the House of Hearth talk. But yeah, I, I do feel like it, it was a bit abrupt with the whole like twists and turns. There's like so many things happening. It was like kind of got hard to keep up with at a second there. But I did like how you slowly kind of caught on to, oh, Lenny and Lynette were probably ones that looked up to Caesar, you know, uh, since they were little kids and all the kids were asking them questions. You probably figured, hey, it was probably Lenny and Lynette that were that were the two kids. Um, and I guess Femine just wasn't really a part of this in this scenario. I guess he was just in the house of Hearth and that's where they met as it mentions in his lore, but yeah, pretty good quest. I, maybe there was, maybe you guys tell me in the comments, maybe there was like a, a hint within the story where Gemma was actually the one that was the thief, but I can't say I found anything that was telling about her being the real thief. So the positives, there are a lot of them. I, I did enjoy the quest very much so, but I will say, I do feel like it was so abrupt when everything came crashing down at the opera epic list. That was just like very fast, you know, um, just very confusing as you can see my face. <laughs> I did enjoy it. And, um, you know, it shed some light on their history, but it kind of was very connected to Caesar. I was hoping we got like more detail on their own story. Maybe like a Lynette hangout one day or something like that. But either way, I enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed it as well. What was your favorite part of it? What did you find the most fascinating? Did you even like it, period? Um, but yeah, I mean, that was so that. Yeah, that was definitely it was going to be Lenny's and that he's the only five star out of the group in terms of story quest go. Or out of the uh, the twins. But yeah, I enjoyed it though. I wish we got a little bit more backstory on Lenny and Lynette in, within this series. But, you know, it was mostly about the whole Caesar case and whatnot. But god dang, man, poor Caesar. Like, good grief. The man died and just got like double betrayed. Like, jeez, please. You know, and we got the sea Caesar as well. Um, I like my like his outfit as well, but yeah, good quest. Poor Caesar, poor Len Lenny and Lynette growing up. And yeah, I, I can't wait to see what unfolds with them in the future. Um, but they're good. I'll tell you that much. They are good. Lenny and Lynette, they are very good actors, very good deceivers. And if they wanted to turn on us at any point in time, they absolutely could, <laughs> like in a heartbeat. So, you know, I'll be a little, a little wary of them. I'm a little wary of them, but, um, yeah, I enjoy doing this this style. It's fun to, to be like fully immersed into it. Um, it was just nice to kind of just like sit down and at a steady pace and just kind of go through it. So it was fun. But I hope you guys enjoyed. That'll be all for me. If I miss anything, you can also let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, here's to Act 3 of the Icon Quest coming up in a little bit. I'm excited for it. Lenny and Lent. They, uh, they are not disappointing. I will definitely say that. So I will catch you guys in the next one.